Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this video slot machine effect. So I've done tutorials that show slot machines for stills, but this is a slightly different one and I think you'll probably find it quite interesting. Oh, and by the way, there's a free Final Cut template for this in the description. So anyway, let's take a look. So for this project, I'm going with 1920 1080 frame rate of 24 frames a second, because that's the frame rate of my source clip and a duration of 12 seconds. So I'm going to come over to my assets folder and bring in my source clip. I will give you a link to that in the description. So the first thing we're going to do is come to object and new drop zone. And we're going to add this video to our drop zone. You can do it any way you like. I like to do it from this menu and I'll turn off the original video layer. So then what we're going to do is we're going to make a group of our drop zone. So right click group and I'm going to call this C for center. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this to fixed resolution and I'm going to set the width to 620. So this is going to give us our central panel. And then I'm going to duplicate this and let's call this L for left. And I'm going to select my drop zone, come to properties and set its X position to be 640. So now we're seeing the left hand segment of the frame. So then I'm going to duplicate this group. I'm going to call it R for right come into the drop zone, properties, and set this X position to negative 640. So now we're seeing the right hand side of the frame. So I'm going to cl close those down. So then I'm going to select the center group and come to object and replicate. Let's turn this group off that's got all the drop zones in like that. In fact, let's call this source. I'm going to call this group slots and I'm going to call this replicator, replicator C. So I'm going to choose circle for the shape. Arrangement is going to be outline. I'm going to have eight points because I want eight segments to my rotating drum. I'm going to turn on 3D and then I'm going to open up the angle. I'm going to set the X angle to 90 and also the Z. And I also need to turn on a line angle. And then I'm just going to set the radius to 1300 and you won't be able to see anything. But what I will actually do is I will turn this slots group to 3D. I will select the replicator. I will come over to its rotation and I will rotate it through 90 degrees on Y. And then I'm going to take the slots group and I'm going to move it back negative 2500 so we can see exactly what's happening here. So now we've got our drum containing our images for the center slot and I am going to target its Z rotation and I'm going to add parameter behavior overshoot and I'm going to set the end value to, I don't know, 1440, I think. And then I just want to make this a little bit less long. So I'm just going to drag that down roughly there. It doesn't really matter. I don't I just want it to be less than the duration of the entire comp. And you can see we're spinning, 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 and then we're slowing down, rocking around. And we've got our center panel. So then it's a matter of duplicating this replicator. Right click duplicate. I'll call this replicator L, replicator left. And we need to swap out the source. So let's open up our source group and let's drag the L group into the object source. And we just need to move this over on X, negative 640. So now we've got our left hand group. And I quite like the way that guy is walking across that divide there. So then we can duplicate this group again, right click duplicate, call this replicator R. Again, we need to swap it out. So I'm going to select the R group from my source group, drop that into there. And we need to position this 640 on X. So now we've actually got our complete image like so. And let's just come to the timeline view here so we can see we just need to make all of these overshoots slightly different length. I don't really care as long as they're different. So there you go. I'm just kind of dragging their handles to make them a different length. So then we get this spinning effect. They're all 
settling down at a different point. So what else can we do? Let's close down that source group. Let's close down even the slots group for now. And let's add a camera because the camera is going to be quite important to us because we don't really want to see the back sides of this drum. And we can actually affect that with the camera. So let's add a camera. And if we adjust the camera's far plane, maybe go for 1440, really depends on how far back we've pushed our main group with the slots in it. You can see we've got this fade off of the tops and bottoms and we can't see the back of the drums. And that's what I want. I might also just reduce the perspective distortion by changing this angle of view to 30. What else can we do? First of all, I want to add an edge to the frames. So let's come back into our source here. Let's open up C. Let's select the rectangle tool and draw out a rectangle like this, roughly speaking. Doesn't matter too much. Make sure to center it up. Let's switch to outline, no fill, and then let's adjust the size. Let's go for 610 for the width and 1070 for the height. And then we can come over to the style and maybe set this to six on the width. So now we've got an edge to our center drum and we can clone that and we can literally just drop it onto the left hand group. We can duplicate that clone and just drop it onto our right hand group. So now they've all got that same edge. And if we decided at any point we didn't like the color, we could always just change that to taste. In fact, I think I might just pick the color of the floor here just for fun like that. So let's close up the source group and let's maybe just add in a background now. So I'm going to come to generators, color solid, drag that into a new group behind everything else, turn it to 2D, not 3D. Come to the inspector for this color and maybe just pick, I don't know, something like that. I've just picked the sky there. What else can we do? Oh, I want to put in my text, but I also actually just want to show you that we can add some nice motion blur to this. So let's turn on motion blur and the default motion blur is just way too much. So let's do Command J to come over to our project properties. Let's set the shutter angle to 90, but let's also up the samples to 16. And that creates a nice smooth blur. Well, relatively smooth blur. You can keep on going up with the samples if you want it smoother, but it looks like that all pretty nice. So the only thing remaining that I want to do is I want to add some text. So I'm going to come to where it's all calmed down a bit. Let's come into our source group. And again, let's come into the C group. Let's select our text tool. And I'm going to type the word Paris, which seems to make sense. I will center align it, make sure that it's aligned here as well. And I'm going to choose 700 for the size. All of this is going to depend on your font. Here I'm using Futura Condensed Extra Bold. I'm just going to adjust the baseline so it's kind of sitting there on the distant horizon. And I'm going to come to Properties and Overlay. And what nice thing about that is it allows the Teufel to superimpose itself over the top of the characters. So then I'm going to clone this text, make a clone layer. I'll drag it into the left hand group. And what we need to do here is we need to move it over so that it's properly aligned. So exposition of 640 gives us the beginning of the word. Let's duplicate this clone layer and let's drag it into the right group like that. And here we just need negative 640. And our effect is complete. Pretty snazzy, very simple to do. Easy to make this into a, an effect if you want for Final Cut. I won't go into the details of that here, but maybe another tutorial if you're interested. And as I mentioned, I've given you a completed generator and you can find the link to that in the description. You will, as usual, need to request access. So obviously I've given you a background here and if we turn that off, you can see that we've got a nice alpha channel, which means you can actually put anything into the background there. But another thing we could do is to create a front panel through which we're seeing our slot machine. So let's do that. Let's come to generators and let's grab a color solid, drag it in here. We don't want to make this group 3D. Let's turn it back to 2D. Let's pick a different color for this color solid. And then what I'm going to do is grab the rectangle mask tool and very roughly draw a mask like that. 
I'm going to center it up and then I'm going to come to its size and we're going to go for 1440 for the width and 810 for the height. And then we're just going to invert that. And now we've got this window and this is the version that I've given you in the generator. We're going to make this a little bit more interesting. We're going to come to the color solid and we're going to come to the drop shadow. We're going to turn the opacity all the way up, the blur all the way up, increase the distance quite a bit to maybe 50. And then let's just set the angle to 270. So it's coming down from the top. And you can see that kind of helps us give this window effect. Now, if we are going with this particular look, I don't think that perspective distortion works. And what I would do is come to the camera and you remember we adjusted that angle of view before. If we set it to zero, you'll see that we basically get a completely flat on view, an orthographic view. And all we need to do is come to our slots group and adjust its scale. So let's go for 75 for that. And I think that's that's a lot neater than seeing that strange sort of perspective distortion on the drums. So there's loads more I could show you, such as how I created this effect where we're going from London to Paris. So transitioning between two different sets of video. And indeed, that's what I've given you in the generator. And of course, each panel could contain completely separate video rather than the same image. So loads we could talk about, but I think that's enough for now. So I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.